So let's let's go right into it. Dom, what's on your Christmas wish list? Then? Oh man, my Christmas oh, wish list. Man. Oh my goodness. Um, let me start with some players that we. Okay. Let me start with a player that I think all of us know. Um, Mr. Fagundes. Oh yes. Oh would, Diego. I would yep. love to see Diego. Low pump, low look alike. Come to... <laughs> I always thought that maybe so the funny. Uruguayan low pump. <laughs> They're brothers. He is, man. <laughs> um, I would love for Diego Fagundes to come to the Quakes. Um, there's been a larger discussion about this, too, as well, on, on the subreddit, which I was really happy to see because it means that people are actually taking a look at the uh, free agents available. Um, you think Jesse trying looks to make at some realistic Reddit? moves? I, I don't. Yeah. I do not. Um, which reminds me, I have to talk about getting AMAs back. Um, yeah. But freaking, um, I feel like I feel like he is a player that has played all over the front um, of right. the attack and also can slot into that cam position yeah. too as well. Um, and I've seen his link up play be really solid. I know there's some inconsistencies there, um, but that's kind of what you get with MLS quality talent. You know, yeah, dude, someone, when they had really Jerry good. Bankston and Sire Sen, mm -hmm. like he thrived with those those guys playing exactly. Up exactly. When you got a guy like that. If if the Quake can bring in like a big striker, a hold up mm -hmm. striker, number nine, natural number nine, mm -hmm. I think Diego would be great. And like you said, he could fill in on the on the flanks really on the well. Flanks too as well. He's yeah. he's still quick. Yeah, he's got good feet. But yeah, yeah he combines well. Yeah, he combines. Like well. We, I mean, we've had some, we've had success with you know players like Hikachu, and I feel like he's he's mm. a much better player, um, filling those roles. And so, you know, that's somebody that I'm looking for the place to take a look at and say, okay, we should bring a guy like this in, um, because the experience within within the league is significant um, on so many different levels. He's basically been through everything that you can as a as an MLS player. So, yeah, and he's um, correct me if I'm wrong. He's he's fairly a resilient player, right? He's not as yeah, injury prone as maybe like Yanni Giallo or, or like you mentioned, yep. Jamir Hika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys. And, um, and he's been to the finals, the MLS cup finals yep. before, and they almost exactly. made a run this last year to the MLS cup. Exactly. Finals. So exactly. definitely a weathered MLS experience type of player that yep. is not that old, but he does, he's more of like a Tommy Thompson esque with a lot yep. of MLS experience. Yeah, yep, exactly. How old is he like 28? Yeah, right um, let me check, but I, I think he's number in front of me. around that range. But he's yeah. not 30 yet. I know that for sure. No, he's definitely not 30 yet. Because when he started in the league, he was only like 16 years old. Like he was right. a boy. Really young, yeah. exactly. Yeah, he's, he's like actually 25. Um, there you 25. Go. So there you go. I remember he was like yeah. hella young. And it was a huge deal, right? Because I think in his second or third season, he was already making MLS All-Star team. He scored like 13 goals one season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he has not – I don't think he's done as well under Bruce Arena. Um, maybe – Somebody like Matias Almeida, because my feeling is that Diego is the kind of person that needs like the structure yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. just maybe like a system, right? I think a system would be good for him. And the same way that a system is good for uh, our left winger, uh, Carlos Fierro. Or, so, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so that, I is, think that might be necessary for somebody like Fagundes. This is kind of a crazy stat. He's currently the youngest player in MLS history to score 50 goals. So oh, definitely wow. a quality player that can mm -hmm. give you some goals. Um, track he, record. He, Boom. I and, think uh, in the, in, in the at, at worst he's a depth option for the team that that they'll need. At worst, I don't know that he's the creative midfielder that we need in in the ten position. But I think I he'd be great to have on the roster. I don't see him as that. He's definitely not like a pure ten. But no, he's, he's not. He would be. You, he would be. He's someone that would be really great the on like a thing, play and going forward that I think would be solid for for our type of. The only play. thing I can see the Quakes saying or the Quakes FO saying is that we already have a player like this, and that's Carlos Fierro. So sure, I they might yeah. they might kind of not sign him and be like, oh, mm -hmm. we already have Carlos Fierro. We're already know? paying him nine hundred. Yeah, exactly. It's also yeah. important to to mention though too that like we have a tendency to kind of fall into this paradigm, right, of like a four four two system, a four three three system. But like yeah. the TSL made a system isn't necessarily fall into that. Uh, paradigm like it's completely different because it's a marking system right mm -hmm. yeah so you could have other options for your attacking players it doesn't have to be 
a traditional formation that that's we keep true. bringing up. Very it's just true. natural for us because being soccer fans for so long and watching yeah. the game, that's kind of like what we're used to to seeing on teams. Yeah, yeah and, I agree. And ima- imagine a midfield, right, with uh, Diego Fagundes, Fierro, and Espinosa. Imagine that, you know, attacking – Three. Mm-hmm. That just mm-hmm. that seems like a whole bunch of creativity. So long field. as Jutson's still on the team, I could see it. Yeah, yeah, right. We just need. I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Got like Jutson, Jutson, and Jackson are going to be there. But speaking of midfield too, as well, this is the midfield is where I think we need to. If we're not going to spend a bunch of cash on a, if we're not going to spend DP money on a ten, um, I would say that we need to take a look at guys like Lee Nguyen to bring mm. into our midfield right guys uh, like lee win not lee win himself <laughs> <laughs> no offense to lee win but he's, he's like he's on the the wrong side of 30 you know what i mean or how he's, about he's how about this guys a guy like bradley wright phillips that I, he I, one of those. again a guy like bradley wright phillips <laughs> but not bradley he's, wright phillips he's getting to that point too as well exactly mm-hmm. um but i mean but but what isn't like Ozzy Alonso still floating out there too as well? In, in he Kong? is. So like, I I just think Judson fills there, that role so well. Is yeah. there a balance space? It's it's not so much of the role as much as it is the age. Yeah, Lee Wen would have been the perfect there, player. Is there a, is there a if he wasn't point where yes these players are old but they fulfill enough of what you're missing to be somebody to to bring in as a solid rotational player. I think right. we talked about Jovan Jones earlier, and that's he would have been he would have been fantastic because he yeah. could play in the midfield mm-hmm. as well, and I yeah. think he slots in well at at a fullback position when you need somebody to fill in, yeah, for that position. But Jovan Jones would have been he, I mean, is he still available? Right, I, I believe so. I haven't seen anybody signing like his yeah. his value can't be like unreasonable. Like yeah. it, it's got to be somebody the Quakes have to consider bringing in. Phil, do you especially have any now people? that they lost Nick Lima. Like you right. just need more options at the fullback He's position. Be, yeah, most definitely, and that's and that's something we're gonna have to address again. Even though yeah. I, I had finally hope that we would be done with this, um, <laughs> but I, but my ultimate priority is is definitely bringing in a DP ten. I yeah. would like to see us finally just please <laughs> have someone in that role because I really would like to see what the Quakes look like. Yeah, with that being fulfilled. Right and then, Phil, with the who's natural- on your Christmas wish list. Who's on my wish list? Yeah. Um, I have a long list, and it wasn't okay. players. Again, okay. I think I misread the <laughs> – No, no, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> number one, uh, the statue of Chris Wondolowski. Oh, yeah. Okay. Post haste. Like yes. Okay? Like we that. don't need to wait any longer. It Just do it. Yeah, okay? It right? could be like Thierry Henry, right? Thierry Henry went back to Arsenal after he played with the New York Red Bulls. His statue was already out front. He still scored that famous goal when he came back in the FA Cup or whatever. Like, just put the damn statue out in front of the Yeah. Stadium. Okay, it's been it's been too long. Um, the next one I have on my list: a continued and full recovery for Benjamin Galindo, the assistant coach for the San Jose Earthquakes, who mm-hmm. was incapacitated uh, with a stroke. So that's next on my list. Uh, I put <laughs> this one silly: uh, an e, a, a new uh, Earthquakes anthem. All right, we had the E forty one from back in the day, and then we had the uh, old firm Casuals, Never Say, Never die, say die, which is excellent. Um, and after watching the verses, I think we need the E42. Right. I forgot yeah. about the E40 anthem. Oh or like Pilo, make one. E40, That's make one. So Someone, true. right? Pilo, yeah, Pilo's a Quakes fan. Like They give him on, they give him a jersey, I feel like, every season when they went on market stuff. So maybe we right. should yeah. do a collaboration. So that's, right? that was next on my list. Let's get a new anthem. Um, Old Firm Casuals actually did a great job with theirs, and it's catchy. But for some reason, like, it didn't catch on, if that makes sense. Like, mm. people – like it they know it but it's not like an anthem necessarily yeah it's a good game day song. that makes sense and that's no is. that's not a that's nothing bad towards lars and the guys who wrote that song it's like, and that's saturday's that's awesome. heroes right my I've, language but it's an awesome song yeah um yeah so is that the name of the actual song yeah it's uh never say die oh gonna be I, saturday's I heroes. think it's a, okay here's 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 how i feel about that about that anthem it's a good game day anthem yes like, i like hearing it before kickoff it yeah. just it just tells me that the the match is about to start. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah I agree. It's like but the like it, Dynamo. They they did they have the Pennywise song, right? They ripped the Pennywise song. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about? Yeah. What? <laughs> I've been I've been heard the beginning of a Dynamo. It's like whoa. Oh, and it's oh, instead wow. of like continuing the thing, it goes, "Let's go Dynamo." Oh, like okay, got yeah. you, got you, got you. I well, anyway, they have that. that. They have the Pennywise one that they ripped. But would I would like, FO? 
when the Quakes yeah. FO ripped uh, Floor Seeps, the, the beat by ASAP Ferg, and put, like, with the introducing the Quakes, I was like, wow, this is insane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, this is an insane, like, intro yeah. song. I was like, geez. And then, no, it's ASAP Ferg's song, so they couldn't use it. Yeah, but yeah, still, it was just like, exactly. geez. Yeah. Like, yeah. They need some hip-hop influence to get the younger type of fans. That's Younger crowd, that's it. Which sure. they've been doing, which they've been doing at games with the at videos games. and stuff, which yeah. has been really cool. So this like, is why we need the new E42 short. Although maybe it should yeah. be P-Lo, right? Because that's the next generation of hip-hop we're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, time, to, yeah. time to maybe retire some of the older There's stuff. There's very few barrier artists that have, uh, hey, in this generation, been consistent like Pilo or I am right. Sue. Like, there's a couple of folks that really just have be, the barrier. I would be even okay with minute, so. Kaylani and her. Like, those two are from the Doing Bay Area, too. Oh, the that's Quakes. right. That'd be so yeah, funny. Kaylani. That'd be absolutely insane. <laughs> okay. That'd be so <laughs> random. You'd be like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Girlfriend's like, why is this happening? Um, which one? Oh. Uh, so I, I have more on my list. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Excuse me here. Uh, no, next one. Danielle Slayton needs to be brought on full time as yes. the uh, color commentary announcer. Yes. Um, She's on the nice list. Yes. Alongside our play by play uh, Passarelli. So let's get let's make that happen. Uh, okay. n- nothing bad against Dangerfield. It's been great for a number of years. But I think Danielle Slayton has proven that she is one of the better in the league at that job. Yeah. Uh, color commentary. So, yeah. We might get uh, poached and, though. Like and then Roz. I have, I have. One, I hope not. Well, she's already working nationally too, right? Yeah. So like, she has other gigs. But to yeah. have her on more often on the Quakes broadcast on uh, CSNBC or whatever, you know, whatever they. Yeah, yeah. Bay Area Sportsnet. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they call it these days. How about uh, some more, so? Yeah, California. Comcast some Sportsnet. More Quakes coverage, right? That should be on the waste list. Like, you know, yeah, CSN more Quakes Sports coverage talking. would be great. You can add that one on there. I have one more item don't on my care. list. Um, this is a big, w- this is not going to happen, but mm-hmm. for the Quakes fans to make amends with Landon Donovan is my last wish. Mm. Make amends with Landon. He did good things for this club when he was here. Um, I'll leave it you at know, that because I know people I don't, don't want to hear it, but that's on my list too. What if they built like a, like a hall of legends and they had Wando statue there? How would you feel if they put Landon right next to him? No, right. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> no, I think I think we can have a bust. We can have uh, a little plaque, mm. you know. But I feel that I feel that way about every great player who's come through this team. Right, uh, Dwayne De Rosario, or if you want to go back further, some of the guys who played for the NASL Quakes. Right, I think there's only one statue that needs to be built, and it's for Chris Wondolowski. I don't yeah, think we yeah. need any other statues right now. My my whole thing about making amends with Landon Donovan is how much did he want the move. Mm. is really what it comes down to I think, right. I think if more people had the knowledge of if he wanted to move or not that more heat would be on Alexi than it would be Landon if we're yeah. comparing mm-hmm. two villains of the club right <laughs> I mean he wanted to play for his, he wanted to play for his home club man he wanted to play for his home yeah. club he so, did his time with the Quakes he went to Leverkusen he played in Germany and then yep. he wanted to play for his home club yep. just like Chris Wondolowski just like Nick Lima did for a number of years. Just like, uh, like Tommy Thompson, who just re-signed, does. Uh, Landon Donovan, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know? And and it's easy for me to say because I'm a big U.S. men's national team yeah, fan. most definitely. And he provided, like, one of the greatest moments that I've ever seen in soccer, you know, as yeah. a U.S. men's team fan. Mm-hmm. And I would say that. not every not every Quakes fan is a U.S. fan. So, I guess this right. is very true. different. And then um, for my wish list, I would uh, – Let's get a second entrance to the stadium so that we can sell more seats to the bar. And, you know, I don't know who I need to talk to about that, but the first season when I could park in the old VIP lot, I mm-hmm. paid the money to park there, and then enter on the back entrances, either via where the ultras were allowed to, to enter or just the main back entrance, everything was perfectly fine. Yeah. Now you have to walk all the way to the front, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. And like I know, I know people pay good money to be in the 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 sky lounge mm-hmm. area that they stole from us. Basically, they stole from us. <laughs> yeah, they stole okay. that from I, us. I feel um, like I need royalties. That was um, our. It was. was our spot. <laughs> you do. You do. That was, was like. That was like. That was like everybody who was like a Sting fan. 
and just wanted to be up in the Raptors, just like you know, <laughs> oh. brooding as we just like. Lost. I didn't get that at first. So I was like, Sting. Oh, that's Sting. I was like, <laughs> no, not, not Sting, I, man. Not Sting, the artist. No, no, no. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, yeah, Sting, all, the wrestler. When, everybody, when this, everybody was like a fan of him. We were just up there chilling, and then they were just like, we could make money off of this. Yeah, right. And then they took the entrances away with it. Why would you <laughs> take the entrances away? Yeah. If the elevator isn't even right there, the elevator is on the far end. Do you know how dumb that is? Oh man, so dumb. If, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a special yeah. entrance for the Sky Lounge VIPs and all their money, just do it at the entrance where the elevator actually is at, not mm. the one where you still gotta walk through the crowd of us poor plebs, basically, <laughs> to get there. <laughs> I thought there okay. was one. There's not one there. No, you really there's no elevator through. on that side. You gotta walk all the way down to the other side, and there's the one elevator there. Oh no way! If you want to get up know, closer to the press box, you gotta walk up the stairs. I thought I had taken the elevator on that side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh shoot! I would walk up there anyway. But still, that's why it right. doesn't make sense right. why that entrance is closed off to anybody who doesn't yeah. have access there. I'm just like, you guys are ridiculous. This is stupid. Well, my whole ordeal with this was. When you were making this stadium, you didn't think that people would hang out by the bar. So now the stadium looks empty because there's always people just hanging out at the bar. If yeah. we make a new entrance, then the maybe the capacity will will be Spread higher, and then you could and then you can sell yeah. uh, general admission bar tickets. And then yeah, yeah that's what I was, that's the easy solution, right? Yeah, that's what general that makes sense. Bar tickets, or you know, just use the entrances that you built like entrances, right? Mm-hmm. How hard is that? Like, it's not. Um, no, it's not. It's an easy fit. Here's a concept. We built openings here to let people in and out of the stadium. Well, my whole thing Let's is like, it. man, like, like, how did you not when when and yeah, we're in this Bay Area, right? How did the engineers not think of the people who are going to be by the bar to, for the whole game? I mean, I don't, like, I don't have a, I don't have an issue with how many people hang out at Lobina. I yeah. think it is a. I think it's one of those signature things about coming to the yes, state. Yes, definitely. I, I completely agree like with when that. I, when I bring friends, everybody, as soon as That's they walk true. in, they're yeah. just like, is that a bar? Yeah. And I'm like, it's a bar. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, the whole thing? I'm like, the whole thing. And everybody wants to go there because you can get a drink, turn around, and, and the goes yeah. right there. That's dope. But for those of us who go every single game, because right. we're season ticket holders, I'm an investor. Let me hop on through the back, pop in and get my beer from Beer of the World, yeah. and walk over to my seat without having to go through all that mess. Like, yeah. that's insane to me that I have to do that every single game. I don't know. I haven't complained about it enough. Maybe I'll do it this season. We'll see what <laughs> there you go. But my whole thing is, if you get more, if you sell more seats, I was talking about this on an earlier podcast, you sell more general admission seats, people yeah. could pregame at the game and then take a free bus down yeah, to yeah. S- downtown SJ and mm-hmm. still party down there for the rest of the night. So yeah, yeah. in my opinion, we don't have money because I mean, eventually when COVID's over, right, this is COVID's yeah. over, we could sell more general admission tickets and that would bring in more revenue for this club. If we find another entrance to mm-hmm. this stadium mm-hmm. to build the capacity or to make the capacity go higher. Mm-hmm. Why not? That's my whole thing. They'll yeah. make the money back on the the price that they sell the drinks for anyway. Right, right? exactly. Sell or sell like a fifteen dollar uh, bar ticket, you know, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. twenty bucks if you want. I there think are a number of things they can do that are better than the current status, but yeah, yeah. hopefully we can talk about it all day. But that was just my one thing no, on my Christmas right. wish yeah, list. No, no, that's a good that's a good one. It was yeah. a good yeah. discussion. I want my entrance back too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got in over that. <laughs> and our last thing here. We um, have. You, are you guys familiar with the Christmas uh, Christmas Carol with Charles Dickens and and all of that? It was screwed. Yeah, it's, yeah, been yeah. An, it's been a number of years, Favi, but okay. I yes, it, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Phil on this. Phil, who oh, is boy. your Quakes ghost from the past? <laughs> That's what you get to say that you're the ghost of Christmas it. past for the Quakes. <laughs> yeah, man, Who's I'm gonna show oh. you the glory time. Or the glory days in in the past, who's who's your Craig's ghost of the past? I got mine. I I think I'm gonna say John Doyle because like after what, what? happened with, What's wrong with you? the ghost of Christmas past, the one that haunt. I mean, 
You want John Doyle to pop up next to your bedside and be like, hell no. That's why he's the, he's a ghost. He's scary, man. I'm just saying like, look at what happened. It's like haunting. Now I might be misinterpreting this, right? Because the ghost of Christmas past might be showing you a better past. Yeah. But I just imagine like the, uh, the haunting quality that is John Doyle totally screwing up what happened in the present and the future. (laughs) Is he just going to show you the 2012 season? Like in like replay, like the whole season. (laughs) I think that's what he would do. Hey, look at this kid. Look at this. Look at what we did. We won the supporter show in 2012. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's good. Then we also lost Stephen Betisher, Justin Moore, uh, everybody. And that's just, been the, that was, that's just the first few names. And it's, it was clear All the time. from Stephen Betasher and Justin Morrow that John Doyle was a big part of that. Mm. Almost. And for them wanting to – for Justin Morrow, definitely. I don't know if you guys remember when Toronto FC came to play. And Justin, and this is, I think, the game where Simon Dawkins scored. And mm-hmm. like Against nine the, men? Or with yeah, nine it, men. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was 9, nine v 11. And we're going to have Justin Morrow so. scored and then like did his little 